When I was laying there after they did the angiogram, you have to lay there for four hours without moving. So you're, you're, you're thinking, you're looking around, you're thinking, well, what are they going to tell me and this and that. What medication am I going on? That's all that kept on going through my mind is, what medication? And then when I saw Eva come into the room and I saw a doctor and another, another doctor come in and I saw Gail come into the room and I, I kind of figured there's something, something happening. And at that point, they virtually had told me that I did not have an AVM, but I had an AVF, which they explained to me what it was, and that surgery was necessary, and it was necessary in a very short time. And at that point, I think I was just, I was in shock. I literally was in shock because now they're talking the word surgery, and surgery is scalpel, needles. It's not what I was expecting at all. Elliot's first angiogram resulted in his diagnosis being changed from an AVM to a DAVF or dural arteriovenous fistula. DAVF is a rare abnormal connection between the arteries and veins in the coverings of the brain. In Elliot's case, some of the arteries of the linings of his brain were improperly connected to the brain's veins, causing a potentially deadly tangle of vessels, which put him at high risk for a stroke or worse. We had to treat him, we had to cure him, because the risk of him developing a bleed or dying from the bleed was 10% per year, which is very, very high. They sat down and they explained to me that the location of where this fistula was um, could be deadly. That there was a very good chance that if something wasn't done, something could happen in a very short time and that I would not be here. In October 2004, eight months after experiencing his first headache, the doctors at UHN's Toronto Western Hospital recommended Elliot undergo brain surgery. Not exactly what a man who doesn't like needles wanted to hear. <music> Elliot Rayful was a retail businessman who lived in the city of Hamilton. The 58-year-old grandfather suffered severe headaches in February 2004, which led him to UHN's Toronto Western Hospital. Diagnosed with DAVF, a rare abnormal connection between the arteries and veins and the coverings of the brain, he was quickly told that his condition was very serious and that brain surgery would be necessary. I virtually said goodbye to everybody because I'm going in for surgery. I'm not going to live. I'm, I'm not going to be around. I'm not going to watch the end of the football games. I'm not going to see my one grandson at that time anymore. And I went through a very, very difficult time. I went to synagogue. I just, I didn't think I was going to be around. Before pre-op, Dr. Deberg met with us. And because I was going in to have the surgery where Dr. Wallace was going to be doing the surgery on top, and at that point, Dr. Deberg had said, I've gone over your files, I've studied and I've studied everything and I'm going to try an embolization and do a little bit of work before Dr. Wallace goes in and does the surgery. So it'll be about a 20 minute procedure, but you'll be asleep for it so that we can prepare you for surgery. The plan was for Elliot to undergo brain surgery preceded by an embolization. Embolization is a non-surgical technique to treat arteriovenous malformations by injecting a special glue to block off the abnormal vessels. On October 19, 2004, Elliot underwent his first embolization performed by Dr. Carl Tebrug. He was uh, frightened to death. But at the same time, he trusted us. He, he, he trusted us completely. So it was an interesting combination of that anxiety and, and, and yet trusting the people that were hopefully going to take care of him. Once Dr. Teberg started to do the procedure, which the embolization, that they came out and told my wife that he was going to proceed and keep going, and he did approximately six hours' work of the embolization. It wasn't a 20-minute procedure. 
he just found that he was good. He felt he could have success in doing. Once he was working and doing the embolization, he then realized that he found another problem in another area, but he couldn't continue because of where all the equipment goes up and goes through. He'd have to come out uh, and do it again. We tried first uh, to go with our little catheters into the blood vessels, put some crazy glue, put a drop of uh, glue into the blood vessels that were feeding the, uh, this fistula, this communication, this little Niagara Falls. And we managed to do almost all of it, but we, we, we could not do the entire thing satisfactorily. We could not exclude it completely. Three days later, on October 22, 2004, Elliot underwent a second embolization, which lasted five hours. And after the second embolization, Dr. Tuber came in to speak to me and told me that um, he was quite pleased that he had done probably 95% of all the work that he wanted to do and he thought the other 5% would possibly heal on its own and that was that was a great feeling knowing that nobody went from the top, nobody did anything and uh, everything was wonderful. So I went home feeling tired but feeling really good. Elliot's second embolization was followed in December 2004 by a second angiogram. Waiting for them to come in and tell me, Elliot, everything is great and Dr. Wallace and Dr. Tuberg came in to talk to me and uh, they proceeded to tell me that they found some other problems and that surgery was necessary and it couldn't wait yeah. too long. Well, in our usual position was if there is response, yeah. before you go into surgery, there's a nurse that pretty well is there with you before you go into surgery and she came over to talk to me and again I I pretty well said that, you know, I've said goodbye to all my family, to my friends and my grand my grandson, and I don't believe that I'm going to come through the surgery. And she said to me, you're going to be fine. She says, look at this face. And I remember she said to, to look at me. And I looked at her and she said, when you wake up, she said, it may not be right away because it will depend on what time and if I'm here or not, but you are going to see this face. And just want you to remember this face and she gave me a big hug and they took me in for surgery. On December 22nd, 2004, Dr. Chris Wallace performed brain surgery on Elliot Rafel in an attempt to complete the elimination of Elliot's DAVF. I woke up and somebody came over and tapped me and they said, Elliot, Elliot and I sort of opened my eyes and I, I looked over. She said, do you remember this face? And I said, I do. She said, I told you I'd be here. And she was there for me. And that was, it was just like, I'm alive. Well, what I didn't know was that when they did the angiogram again, they found another problem. Again, I was told, it's not over we have another problem and this is a very major problem it's in an area where Dr. Wallace cannot go back in and reoperate he can't go from the top the only possible way will be Dr. Terberg. He was operated on by my colleague Dr. Chris Wallace who further uh, made the, uh, the abnormality smaller and then a little bit to our disappointment, uh, when we checked him afterwards and repeated the uh, angiogram, we found that there was still a tiny, tiny little bit remaining. So we took him for the third time uh, back in and we were lucky this time that with our, we were able to reach exactly the, the position that we needed to uh, achieve and we could inject the final drop of glue and, and made, the, uh, made the thing disappear. On March 4th, 2005, Dr. Carl Tobrug performed a third embolization on Elliot Rafel.